Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. Just put together a quick video, just investigating the knock sensor fault on this 2019 Volkswagen Transporter. This one's done, I think, 80,000, 90,000 nearly. Um, it's got some permanent fault codes in it. We've plugged it in with the top down diagnostic machine. Now, there are some other fault codes in here and different ECUs that I'm not too worried about them tonight, different issues that we're going to be needing to look into. But if we go in the engine control module, you see we've got some faults with the knock sensor. Just run you through all these. Now it says we've got 10 codes in there, but some of these fault codes are actually the same. But we'll just see we've got P2209, which is knock sensor, bank one, sensor one. It's only got one bank because it's a, a four cylinder. So just sensor one is the front sensor. Now, some of these models, depending on the exact year range, this one's a 2019. Some of them only have one knock sensor, some have two. And they might have a, a particle quality sensor as well, which looks a bit similar, um, but just has a different ECU on it. And then we've got P2200 knock sensor one there. And you can see we've got four, for some reason, exactly the same code there. P2203. Knock sensor bank one, sensor one circuit high, P2202 circuit low. It says the same there again. And then we've got a different issue there relating to the starter. Not too worried about that. That's not, not normally in there. These knock sensor codes that we've got, we can clear the codes. As soon as we turn the ignition back on, the fault codes are permanently there again, which is normally a good sign. That's more of an electrical fault uh, if it's coming straight back on as well. You need to be careful with knock sensor codes. They're, they are mega expensive. You want to be going for a genuine sensor. Once I get it up in the air and just show you where it's located, I'll show you the sensor that we've got and just run you through how much that costs and I'll put some links to it as well. But if you get NOx exceedance codes, that can quite often be related to a different issue where it's actually not getting the level down and it's just reporting that the actual NOx level is quite high, that's all. So you do need to be careful and just check the wiring when you're replacing it. But we've got a wiring diagram. I'm just running you through testing the wires and the what feeds and what earths you should have at the plug as well. So but I'll just get it up in the air now and just run you through everything. Right, so just coming up from underneath, I'll just run you through a few bits quick. Just started at the front. We've got the flexi piece there. DPF pressure pipes running alongside it there. Got the AdBlue injector at the front there. But just to the back of the DPF, basically we've got a temperature sensor there. Now this is a knock sensor. Now as I said earlier on, this is the model with just one knock sensor. Some of them have two. If it's got another one, obviously one will be a bit more towards the front and then one will be further back. But basically this one's the knock sensor there. <clears throat> and this sensor there that actually looks quite similar is actually a particle quality sensor. Now they do look a bit similar, but you normally find that the knock sensors are 22 mil and the quality sensors are 24 mil. Um, but on the other end of the plug, the ECU section of it does normally look a bit different as well. Um, but you can just see on this one, the actual wiring goes up on the top of the heat shield. So all we're gonna do, need to do to start with, just to actually access the plug and the ECU, is just drop this heat shield there. We've got a couple of 13s there, and then we've just got some of these spring clips that are on there. So all I'm gonna do to start with is just undo them, just drop that heat shield down a bit so we can just run you through testing the wiring. I'll just show you quickly as well. There's a couple of tools that I normally get out for this job. I'll put a link to these in the description below that are quite handy. There's a little tool that wraps right around the knock sensor to get a decent purchase on it. We've got a thread chaser there. Sometimes they can bind up a little bit and you need to clean the threads up afterwards. So we'll just keep that on standby for doing these knock sensors. We've got a genuine Volkswagen knock sensor. Now these are mega expensive. But I definitely recommend fitting a genuine sensor. I've had loads of trouble. Well, I haven't, I haven't had loads of trouble because I've only fitted one or two. But basically, every time I've tried an aftermarket one, it hasn't worked, and we've had loads of trouble with it. So, but there aren't really any decent quality ones out on the market yet. So. Um, but yeah, the retail price on this one at the minute is actually seven hundred and seventy-eight quid. So, they are an expensive item. You won't be making sure that you're right before you fit it. I've got a wiring diagram. Once we get to the connector, I'll just run you through that in a bit more detail, but you can just see on this setup, basically this one's a knock sensor there, this one's a quality sensor, but on some of the other versions, which have got two knock sensors, you'll have another one on the diagram as well there. Um, but run you through that and the fit, what the feed should be in a bit more detail once we get that heat shield off. And we can see the actual plug on the connector there as well. So but yeah, just get that heat shield for, down for now and just run you through testing it quick. Right, 
Now, let's just show you quickly now we've got the cover down. And the covers are fairly flexible. You can just kink them down and easily push them back up and just get them back into position there. But this actual sensor there is part of the particle quality sensor. They tend to have a bit more of a plasticky body to them. But the knock sensor is just located up there. Now, all I'm going to do, just to get this one down before we test it, I'm just going to undo a little 10 mil there. I think there's only one on this side. Sometimes there's one the same just on the other side there as well but we're just going to undo that just to get the sensor out and just pull it down just out of the way and then to get this connector off there you just simply need to just with a little flat bladed screwdriver just flick the gray bit back and then you can pinch it up to pull the plug off so we're going to do that just so we can test it as well so just get that down quick then we'll run you through testing it Right, so just skipped a quick step just so I got all rigged up ready for testing it. But we can just see we've got the connector off there now. I've just took the knock sensor, just left it tucked up there for now. It was a little bit awkward to get that connector off. Um, just trying to sort of pinch it up, I ended up just putting the flat bladed screwdriver just in the back of the connector, just to pop it down that way, just so I could work the plug a little bit. But just try to show you though, looking at the plug and just focus on it. You can see the numbers on the actual end of the plug there. You can see we've just got one on the left two, three, four, and five on the right there. But I'm just gonna run you through the wiring diagram now. All I've done just for recording it, just so that I can sort of show you what, what I'm getting while, while doing it at the same time. Normally I'd just have the meter hanging and just hold the negative side just to the exhaust, just to get a good earth. But just for the video, I've hung my meter, meter up and I've just put the black one on the multimeter, just simply clamped it to the exhaust, just to get a good earth. And then to start with, we're gonna be checking for the live feed the main 12 volt feed, and then we're going to be checking the can lines. So we've just got the multimeter set on the voltage setting. If we just run you through the wiring diagram quickly, I'll just put a still shot of this over the top of the video as well. But basically, looking at the knock sensor here, you can just see pins two and five are earths there. Pin one is the 12 volt supply. You can see we've got a few, some fuses in line and a relay as well. And then pins three and four are the main can lines, the communication lines there as well. So basically to start with, on pin one, we're going to be looking for a 12 volt supply. Pins three and four on the can lines. We should basically have two and a half volts on each, roughly. They should both, between the two of them, they want to be adding up to five volts. And then on pin two and five, we need to have a decent earth on there. And just to test this, at the minute, I've got the ignition on stage two, just two turns of the key there, so it's not running, but it's put all the lights on the dash. I'll just try and mount the camera up as best as I can and just sort of tell you which pin I'm on while I'm just probing it with the red side of the multimeter, that's all. So the pin one was on the left with it in there. You don't really want to be stabbing into the end of the plug as well. And if you just look at these, there's a little bit of a contact that you can just touch through the side there as well. So if we just go through the side of there, we can just see we've got 12 volt feed there on pin number one. And then if we go on to pin three and four, so pin three, we've got 2.52 on there. Then pin four, 2.54 on there. So between adding them up, adding them two up, we've got five volts there. And now all we're going to do is just swap the multimeter over to the continuity setting just to check the resistance to the earth. And basically on that, if we've got a circuit, we'll just get a nice tone there and then we'll be able to let it see what the resistance drops to. So we'll just check pin two and five now. So you see on pin two, we've got a good earth there. And then if we go to pin five, we've got a good earth there as well. So at this now, basically we know that the wiring's okay. Now we haven't checked it on a diagnostic machine with a scope or anything like that, but the basic communication wires are there. We've got its 12 volt feed, two earths are there. It's a pretty safe bet now that we're gonna be okay replacing the knock sensor. So all we're gonna do now is just run you through getting the knock sensor swapped over. All we've got to do is just loop the actual sensor through and out, and I'm just gonna run you through just cracking the sensor off and getting that undone quickly.
You know, it's just to start with, these can get fairly, can be fairly tight. I'm just going to put the tool on there, put a nice long bar on it to get a decent purchase on it. I'm just going to crack it off to start with. And then once I know that it's, if it's, just see how it's coming undone, then I'll just pull it all through and just get it on this side of it. So as we keep, keep on doing it, we're not just twisting all the wire up. Obviously we're replacing it, so it doesn't matter too much, but it just makes it a bit tidier and just keeps it out of the way, out of the way while we do it. So. Right, so that's actually cracked off really nicely. Now sometimes these can get mega tight and sometimes they just bind up and pull the threads out of them. But you can see just cracking that off, it's nice and free now. Now these always tend to get stuck on there, but on the new one, the actual nut piece does spin freely from the center there. So, but now that that's cracked off nicely, I'm just gonna pull all the sensor out. It is just clipped into a few bits there. So we're just gonna unclip it, drag it all out and we'll get the sensor out and get it swapped over. So that's all the knock sensor out. You can see looking at the wiring, it doesn't look like there's any really obvious sort of damage marks to the wiring or anything like that. Um, so obviously sometimes worth just checking that, but these are a really common issue. And I think they seem to fail in the actual ECU section of them, which is this is the piece that tends to make them quite dear. So you can see it's actually quite a basic sensor, a lot of money for what they are really. But all we're gonna do now, just with it off, we're just gonna swap the little two caps over. They just pull out and just swap over there. So we could just pull them out. And on the new one, you'll actually just be able to push it up into place and it'll just grab on the actual teeth on the studs there. So we'll just check it, always check the length compared to your new one, just check it looks all the same and everything. And we've got the new one there, just check the length was okay. You can look at the numbers on it, it's worth checking the numbers, sometimes they're superseded though. Um, but it does come with a little protective cap and the new sensor has a bit of ceramic paste on so you don't need to worry about putting any Heat, heat grease or anything like that on it. It's all ready to go. And you can see on this new one, the nuts spinning freely there. So all I'm gonna do now is just loop the sensor through, just, just thread this in lightly, connect it up. And then once I've got the sensor through, I'll then just nip that up as well. So we'll just get it all located back into place. And where we've obviously clipped the cable ties, just gonna put a couple of cable ties back around there as well. And at the end of the video, once I've got it all fitted and dropped it back down, I'll just run you through, just looking through on the diagnostic machine, because there might be a procedure for running it through to sort of say it's had a new knock sensor replaced as well. You don't have to do this all the time, but some models do have that procedure, and it's well worth checking to see if it needs doing. Now, I'll just show you quickly, you can't quite see it that well, but the knock sensor's all fitted back up there. I've just put the connector back on, just clip the grey tab back in. Now, can't the original clips there actually clip into the body? I haven't got any of them, so I've just cable tied it up as close as I can. I'm just going to sort of push it into that location. And then the heat shield, once we get it up, we can just sort of adjust it and just pull it just so it nips them into place a little bit. We'll just get that bolted back up quick, then we'll nip the knock sensor up, then we'll be ready to drop it back down and just check through clearing the vault codes and see if there's any sort of programming procedure. The best sort of thing I find to do, just to nip that little securing clip up, if you just get a little socket, put it over the stud, and just simply tap it up, and you can just see we're tapping it up, you can get it nicely pinned up into place there. So just nip the knock sensor up now. Now it doesn't need to be silly tight, just a, just a bit more than a light nip really. Just before you nip it, just make sure your wiring looks all right as it locks it into place. Uh, so knock sensor's all nipped up now, everything's back on and all finished off underneath. So what we'll do is drop it back down now, get back in the car, clear all them fault codes, and then just check for that uh, programming procedure. Mm -hmm. 
And as you can just see there, just cleared all the fault codes. Just left a one fault code in there, just a data message in the instrument cluster there. So, but as I said before, it wouldn't even allow me to clear these fault codes in the engine control module. So it's pretty much now it's sorted the fault already. But if we now go into the engine control module, and we'll just look for any procedures relating to that knock sensor. Right, so just had a quick scan through in the engine control module, just on the special functions on the top down scanner, scanner here. Now, I couldn't actually see any options for it. If I can't see any options, I'll normally just give it a good run. Just make sure that the no fault codes come back, see if it runs okay, and I'll just carry on and leave it at that. If I do find any information about any configuring it out, I'll add it on at the end of the video as well. But all I'm going to do now is just quickly start it up, just make sure the engine light goes out. It's a little bit flat just because we've had the ignition on for a while but you can see the engine lights out whereas before as i said earlier on as soon as the ignition was cycled it wouldn't even let you clear the code the engine light was permanently on so what i'm going to do now is just give it a decent run i always like to give it about three four mile road test at least and then just rescan it anyway even if the light hasn't come on just to make sure it's all clear in there and just before taking it we'll just do a quick scan again as well just to make sure before going any further we can see already the engine control module's clear so i'll just let it finish its scan but i'll just give it a quick road test just to finish the video off and just let you know that it's definitely fixed the fault afterwards so but yeah just a, another faulty knock sensor for anyone that watches the channel you'll see that i've replaced quite a few of these now but if it's on any different model i always like to put a fresh video together the basic tests for it are the same but if anyone's looking to replace one on that specific model so it's just nice to see it replaced on that exact model that so, so unfortunately these are, these are quite common but i'd definitely advise going for genuine units i'll put a link to a genuine one in the description so i've had a few problems with some of the aftermarket ones out there but it's something that might get a bit better in the future and some better ones might come available um but yeah hope the video helped if you did give it a quick thumbs up and subscribe to the channel but well, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time